that this is something that is usually kind of sold as a an obvious good move, right? They're, they're I think, you know, typical high school textbook may even mention a little bit of uh, constitutional concerns at the time. That ultimately, this was just too much, you know, such a good steal. You could not pass it up. But I, I think it's interesting from this perspective, and I really think this chapter is one of the, the, the very best in really highlighting the difference of the narrative uh, that, that you have outlined here, building off of Rothbard's work, because it, it's, it's the, the, the impact of this absolutely corrupting the political ideals of what we think about with Jeffersonian politics, right? And I, I love the way that you start off this chapter uh, framing it with the death of Hamilton, uh, how, how his death in 1804 uh, was the hammer, uh, hammered the nail into the Federalist coffin. But while the reactionary forces decayed, their special interest policies lived on for slowly but surely the libertarian Republicans embraced statism. And so that it, it is this move because of, you know, touching on the aspects that we were talking about last week with kind of the recognition that with the drawing back of the, the spending programs of the Federalist regime, things like that, it's not only important just in a tax aspect, right? Like, oh, well, you know, this is going to create more burdensome taxes on farmers and things like that. But th th there really is a corrupting element here when you think about the creation of, of new government offices, when you think about money spent and investments uh, that you know have to be allocated through the political process, you start dealing with a, a, a sectional differences and different considerations. And here, you know, the, the, the growth of this you know, major increase of spending done through questionable constitutional grounds, though, from the perspective of you know, the way that we, that we understand the, the reason for the Constitution, it was explicitly designed to expand the government, not to limit it. And therefore, it, it to be very fairly argued, as was at the time, that this was a constitutional move, even if it went against the Jeffersonian principles and that the strictly the, sh the strict reading of the Constitution that the old Republicans that, that we've been praising, you know, that, that strategic pivot, you know, there, there is a, a sound legal argument in defense of the Constitution, but it goes against that work being done by, again, in, nom in theory, the political party in power right now. Yeah, so this this is a very important point to understand regarding the Louisiana Purchase and just what exactly it did to the Republican Party, because in many ways it's sort of this – it was uh, the, 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 this corrupting agent because it, it, it swelled the amount of land in the country to an, a, an enormous size. And this led to all sorts of changes in the Republican Party, which which we will uh, which we will get to. But it was this the, this usually when the Louisiana Purchase is discussed in high school, uh, uh, you know, American history textbooks or even college American history textbooks, it's described as one of the most important and beneficial uh, per, you know, laws in United States history, and it's generally regarded as Jefferson's best legislation. So that's when people who usually are Jefferson haters, they'll say, well, he did that. He did the Louisiana Purchase, which, of course, from our perspective, is probably like his worst thing that he did, right? Because um, by pushing for this, it really did open up Pandora's box, so to speak, to broad constructionism, all right? The Constitution does... Intended by, you know, as, as intended by the Federalists, it does allow for the purchase and annexation and incorporation of territories into the United States. They, they, they intended this. OK. And many Republicans also argued along these lines. But Jefferson was dedicated during this time period to upholding his strict constructionist view. And his logic was basically saying, OK, we can read into the treaty making power because, of course, there has to be a treaty in order to purchase the uh, the, the the land you know, from from another country. But it's saying, well, once we do that, well, then, you know, the powers are boundless. So wouldn't it be better to just pass an amendment? OK, requiring uh, or like pass an amendment, allowing or in explicitly enabling us to do that? then we can purchase the territory. And for this, it's it's really the precedent. So it's the idea that's saying, all right, we're in control of the government. We could read the Constitution broadly, or we could stick by our principles, uh, read the Constitution strictly, and then we're going to set a good precedent. Because even this way, it would still be a problem if Louisiana was purchased, but it would have been less a problem because at least there would have been an amendment. 
Okay. But Jefferson ultimately um, said uh, he, he discarded this, uh, this possibility. He said, all right, we'll pass an amendment after the fact, which is completely useless then. It defeats the purpose of actually having a binding constitution. And once he did that, once he, he sort of broke his rule, once he stuck his hand into the cookie jar, so to speak, well, then he really just said, all right, well, why don't we use the constitution, uh, you know, read it broadly to accomplish other aims that we want. And then when that happened, the whole strict constructionist approach really suffered a, a fatal setback. So this Louisiana Purchase has important implications, not just for territorial land, you know, land mass and all of that, but also for the, um, the, 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 the constitutional implications regarding other policy. So it's really important to understand that Jefferson, he, he was really torn by this, and he was at one point going to push for an amendment. And even though some people said Napoleon wasn't going to wait, uh, Napoleon was going to wait. He needed the money. Uh, he wasn't going to uh, he, he, he was only going to sell it to the United States. So there, there wasn't someone else. Uh, he needed the money and it could have it could have gone through. But instead, Jefferson just basically decided to downplay constitutional issues. And once he did that, the die was cast, so to speak.